Oh, capacity crowd today. Wow. <laughs> Praise God. Do um, you have an announcement? Yes. You want to make it? Oh, I'll do Go this ahead. first. Yeah. Okay, step over here. Um, I'm underneath the mic. This is my son, Paris D'Angelo Armstrong. <laughs> he dropped D. He, 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 dropped D he dropped the D. I don't know what, who gave him that permission. But uh, this is my son. He's a, he's a film editor. Um, that's his, uh, his goal and his passion. And if you saw the video that he did of me, the documentary that he did of me, um, it was excellent. Everybody loved it. So um, he just wanted to say, um, I just wanted to say thank you for all the support and encouraging me. Um, I was very honored to do a um, documentary on my father. And if you could um, subscribe, I'll appreciate it. Amen. All right. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. Huh? Oh, just. Uh, yeah, well, when you click on to the video, just make sure you subscribe and hit the button because he's going to do another video. He agreed. Uh, did you guys see the big guy that was in the video that that was in the video? Um, uh, Craig Munson. Um, he, Craig Munson asked if he would do a, a documentary on a doc, doc, documentary. Thank you on his life. So he's, he's agreed. Like, so we'll start working that out later because that guy, uh, and I'm hoping uh, for the opportunity to witness to him and, and, and get him saved, but that's a guy that um, was so much bigger than Arnold Schwarzenegger that when, when, he, would, when he would do a contest with him, the, the, the crowd would boo because they knew that he was bigger than Arnold and better shaped than Arnold, but he, they, you know, at the time it was just a different thing, but he was a, a serious bodybuilder and uh, his life in prison and out of prison, gang life and everything. And the end of his life, I'm, 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 I'm proclaiming it today, is going to be me leading him in, in, in prayer to accept Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You have an announcement? I do. Okay. Amen. Come back over here. We have, a, we have a ministry that has been working behind the scenes that is ready to kind of come forth and it's called the Troop Project. Um, next week, Ms. Jasmine is going to graciously share a little bit more about the Troop Project, but just really quickly, um, the purpose of this is to be able to minister to those in military. Amen. Whatever branch of military, we will, um, they are trying to put together care packages to send to those who are serving overseas um, with a little word of ministry. Um, and they will focus, uh, later they will focus mostly, basically on women and military wives because we understand that they don't have as much support, amen, in doing what they do. And so, and because they are women, it's Jasmine and Lisa who's heading this project. Um, they will be ministering and, and forming ministry for women in military as well as military wives so their first um, fundraiser for their care package is a popcorn sale and for those of you online you'll see this that went out in today's email um it's double good and it's only three days starting on the 30th Amen. on may 30th it will begin you can just go and buy yourself some popcorn and the proceeds i believe it's 50 percent right of yeah. the proceeds goes directly to the troop project so that they can start gathering their supplies for their care packages that they will be sending all over amen all over the world wherever the lord leads them if we have it they'll send it amen, amen. so please amen. keep this ministry before the lord but we're going to hear more about them next week from miss jasmine amen. Amen. amen amen where do they go to buy the it's online it's in the newsletter the newsletter this morning has this flyer and in this flyer there's a link to the fundraiser. It opens on May 30th. There's only three days to pop to purchase. The popcorn's really good. The popcorn's never good. tried it. The popcorn <laughs> is really, really good. If you yes. like popcorn, if you like different flavors, it's really good. Um, and the proceeds from that will go directly to the Troop Project. Amen. This is such an awesome ministry. Again, the Lord given us, gave us another opportunity for outreach. This is an outreach and that we can touch those that might can't hear us or those that feel like they don't have anyone. This is our opportunity to love on yet some someone else 
right? Someone out there that's been working for their country and dying and fighting for their country. Yeah. Now we have an opportunity to love on them and love on their wives and support them in this way. Yeah. So please, you guys, um, as the Lord leads you, either buy the delicious, absolutely delicious, sinful popcorn. <laughs> or, you know, just definitely keep the ministry up in prayer and help us with a, just a fresh anointing of ideas on how we can relate and, and speak to these individuals. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. Let's Hallelujah. pray. Okay, go ahead. Hallelujah. Our Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, Lord, just thank you, dear Jesus, that you're constantly stretching us, Lord, to stand as examples to do your will, dear Lord. Help us to be in cor courageous in all of our endeavors, dear Lord. As Pastor Sandy continues to speak a very hard message that's not often received in the best in the way that it should, dear Lord, but you continue to empower him, dear Lord. I pray for constant overflow, dear Jesus, as you speak to your people, dear Lord, that have already bowed their hearts and ready to receive, dear Jesus, that his words are your words, and they flow from him, dear Lord, with the and the anointing that comes only from your Holy Spirit. We thank you and we bless you on this day. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, honey bun. Yeah, I do it. I do it. <laughs> All right. Okay. Sherry Lynn is here with Michael. Man, he's a Steeler fan, but you let him in anyway. We, you let him in anyway, Pastor Ben. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, God is good. Okay. <laughs> All right, let me get, I don't know, who does all, does this stuff belong to somebody, Pastor Ben? There's a lot of stuff on my, I just wanted them to move. Okay. There you go. And there's a phone, oh, purple, good. Nikki's. Yeah. All right. Hallelujah. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Brent, what's your, what, what's your friend's name? What's your name, Brick Brother? Big guy. Michael. Who should be? Michael? All right, we got another Michael. God bless you, brother. Thanks for coming. All right, Zoe and Miss Unique are here, and we're ready to roll. Praise God. Okay. Um, I was going to say, excuse me, in Hebrew. Um, okay. Um, uh, uh, Anaknu, po be soldiers for Christ, kachum kachalim bishvil Mashiach. Anaknu tefillin bishvil lechem, lebenu im lechem. And uh, we just want you to know that we love you. We're praying for Israel, and we're praying for everything that's going over there. Okay, so God bless. Thank you. All right, here we go. I want you guys to look at this word here in Greek. See that this word is in Greek. And this word is in Hebrew. Okay? Can you point it again, Pastor Sam? Yes. This word here is in Greek. Okay? And this word is in Hebrew. They both have the same numerical value. Okay? Um, this, what do anybody know what this this letter is in Hebrew? Vav, that which is numerical value of what? Okay, so this is also six, and that's also a six. So this word equals out to 666. I just wrote it like a monster can because I don't like writing 666, but monster can is 666. Um, and then this other word here is also 666, and this is like God, ki Elohim, okay? That's uh, uh, Satan's proclaim to, to Eve that if you eat of the fruit, you will be ki Elohim. So it became the first 666 in the Bible because it was the sin that brought man, man into sin. But this word was very interesting to me. Do, who knows the number for rebellion in, in, in the Bible? The number for rebellion is 13, okay? Because everybody goes unlucky 13, but also the number for love in Hebrew is 13 because love is conquering rebellion. Okay, so um, this word right here is very unique because it's, it's found 13 times 
in the New Testament. And God said, was telling me this is the problem of the church. And we don't understand why it's the problem. And I'll tell you what the, 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 that word is in Greek uh, right now. Huh? Yeah, no, I'm not going to go back to the board. And I'm going to tell you what that word is in Greek. It is the word tradition. Okay? Let's go to Matthew chapter 15, verse 2 and 3. Matthew 15. I hear pages turning. That's so cool. <laughs> and here's, I'm going to start reading at verse 1. It says, Then some of the Pharisee teachers of the law came to Jesus from Jerusalem and asked, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? They don't wash their hands before they eat. Jesus replied, why do you break the command of God for the sake of your traditions? Gotcha. So tradition is a very bad word in both Greek and Hebrew. I want you to know that. There's nobody that honors their tradition because it's a bad word in both Hebrew and I've just and I found out it's a it's a bad word in Greek. It's it, it's it, it actually means here's let me give you the the title and the, the, the definition in the Greek the transmission of customs or beliefs from generation to generation a doctrine believed to have divine authority though not in the scripture okay in Hebrew it means to follow something without even considering investigation okay so if you follow something and you don't even consider investigating whether it's true or not, but you're just going to follow. It was like when uh, uh, um, they were asking me, well, do you want to now become a Muslim? And I was like, I haven't read the book yet. And it was like, well, do you want to say your Shahada and do it? I was like, I haven't read the book yet. Let me read the Quran some and then I'll get back to you rather. But I said, thanks for my new name because, you know, Rahman's better than Sandy. So... <laughs> I took the name and I started reading the book. But once I started reading the book, I realized, wait a minute. Crazy. <laughs> did Abraham take Isaac to Mount Moriah or did he take uh, Ishmael? Because the Quran was telling me Ishmael. And I was like, wait a minute. Um, I, so I started asking questions and they started getting angry. And then I had more questions. And then I read a scripture that said, if anyone believes that Christ died on the cross, he is fooling himself. God put a replacement for him instead of Christ because God would never kill someone like Christ in that way. It's a scripture that is in the Quran. So I went back with that one and I got kicked out. That was my last day. And I was like, can I keep the name? <laughs> <It was> like, <laughs> <laughs> but I investigated what people were trying to give me. You understand? Um, so that word is tradition. It, has, it is 13 times in the New Testament. So God wanted you to know that tradition is rebellion. Okay. The black church, I think, is, and the Spanish church, I say there are a lot of churches that are deep sunk in tradition, and you never get to what God wants you to do, because tradition can be going to church. Tradition can be doing the things that you believe make you a Christian. But in doing the one thing that God wants you to do, to be a Christian, you haven't touched. And that is a personal relationship with him every day. Amen. All good, Pastor. The other word, oh, now listen to this. The word dragon is mentioned in the book of Revelation. How many times you think? Thirteen. It could be six, if, but it's 13 times because rebellion is always linked 
to Satan, okay? Key Elohim is, of course, Satan telling Eve, if you eat of this, you will be like God. Because that's Satan's big boast, right? I'm going to be like the most high. I'm going to be, and God says, okay, this is your number, you can say that. And Satan has a lot of brags and a lot of boast, but we have to realize everything he's setting up is going to come to zero. How do we know that? I want to ask you this question. How is it that the, the country that is, that was on the front page at the time of the flood, in, in the time of Noah, is still the same country on the front page in 2021? Mm. The whole world is still about Israel, and we've talking about 6,000 years, and everybody's still talking about Israel. Are they safe? Who are they going to have to war against now? The same thing that they were talking about in Exodus, they're still talking about in 2021. So it should, it should hit you that somewhere God has been telling you the truth about the journey of human life, history, how it would play out, and where we would be at the time when it plays out. Listen, our problem is this. We in the church, we believe that um, antichrist means against God. And antichrist is not against God. Antichrist means a person that is wants to be in place of God. It means a pseudo Christ. So it says the pseudo Christ is coming and we say, no, he's the Antichrist. No, that's our interpretation. He's saying someone is coming who wants to be Christ. He wants the world to accept him as Christ. OK, and I want you to know and understand that. Because if you stop looking for people who are against Christ and start looking for people who are acting like they're with Christ, you might find your enemy. Mm, amen. And so our enemy has been among us and nobody's. And, and you know what? They've done such a good job of disguising it that if I tell you the truth, people get mad at me. Yeah. OK, listen to this. In 1993, the Southern Baptist Convention published a report on Freemasonry, which noted the many uh, Southern Baptist Convention leaders who were also Freemasons, as well as many points of agreement between Freemasonry and Christianity, along with some areas of disagreement, too, uh, 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 between the two. Southern Baptist Convention, in their documentation, sent this to all of their 50,000 churches that they owned. So the Southern Baptist Convention, whose head is Freemasonry, has 50,000 churches in America. Wow. So that means they appoint their pastors. And since they have the money, they're probably going to become mega churches. And since they have the money, they're probably going to get a Christian channel. <laughs> and so God's advice to us is to study to show who approved. Thyself. Thyself approved. And the scripture says when you see this, expose it. It doesn't say to hide it, help them hide it. He's, it the scripture says expose it. Let people know that this isn't right, okay? But this isn't what Christians do. We get offended because you, you're saying, um, uh, uh, what's Smile a lot? What's his name? Smile a lot, Joel. Osteen. Joel Osteen. I can't believe that you, that you would say that about Joel Osteen. He's such a nice guy. And I was like, well, him and his wife were just at the uh, uh, Lady Gaga concert, uh, supporting uh, the LBGT. They keep bad letters. Uh, lifestyle, right? <laughs> so I'm like, you know, why am I your enemy? Because I'm trying to expose you that maybe they're not Christians, okay? 
So we have to study and understand what God wants us to know about seeing the enemy, okay? Because we're all, you can tell somebody, if you give me a four, a, a green, I mean a, a, an orange $4 bill and I'm a cashier, it ain't gonna pass. We're all trying, we can all say, you know, if you're a cashier, any of us, they, orange, here it is, an orange $4 bill. I wanna pay for this with this. Everyone in here would say no. Everyone in here knows when something is evil because it's plain. So is Satan ever going to come to you that way? Nope. No. Why would he do that? So now we have to be better investigators for ourselves because wolves don't put on sheep clothing because they want to hang out with sheep. They want to eat. <laughs> <laughs> And so if you understand why they're disguising, you'll understand why you have the confusion in church and why if... Here, let me, let me finish reading this for a second. Let me... Sorry. Listen, this was in the documentation they sent. They said, J. Buon is... They said to the, all of their, their churches, all their 50,000 churches, that they needed to accept this documentation. And if they did not want to accept it, they could get out of the Southern Baptist Convention. But they get paid a lot of money to be in Southern Baptist Convention. Okay? And so therefore, <coughs> they say, he says, Jebu On is equal to Yahweh. Wow. Who is equal to Baal, who is equal to Osiris. This is the document that was mailed to 50,000 Southern Baptist ministers and church leaders that resulted in groundbreaking passage of the official Southern Baptist Convention uh, doctrinal statement of 1993 that Freemasonry was, was in incompatibility with Christianity and Southern Baptist doctrine. The, one of the biggest uh, uh, Southern Baptist churches is Rick Warren. Who knows who Rick Warren is? He did the thing for, for President uh, uh, Bush when he was inaugurated, he gave the speech. I was like, wow, this guy's a Christian pastor. How did he get to do the speech before a president who is a Skull and Bones member? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> but we're not looking for people who um, who are speaking for Christ, we're looking for people speaking against Christ. Mm -hmm. So it's easier for them to slip in and to sell you what they want to sell you without you being aware of it, okay? So to protect yourselves, what do you do? Study, Study to show thyself approved and if you understand that you're studying to show yourself approved, people won't be able to fool you when you hear bad doctrine. For example, I'm watching, I would forget what year we, we were here, and, um, and um, T.D. Jakes is sitting with Oprah, and Oprah wants him to agree with her. So she says, you don't believe that Jesus is the only way to, to heaven, do you? And T.D. Jakes goes, of course. He couldn't be the only way because we are a diverse people and there are many ways to T.D. Jake says this and goes back to his church and all the members are still there if I did that it would be crickets in here <laughs> why because you're studying because you're looking for you're making sure that I'm not part of some foolishness that is false right so the church has been steep in it, okay? We've been steep in it. There's nowhere in the scripture that Jesus hits a person on the head, they fall on the floor and start shivering, and then they get up and they're healed. That's a kundalini spirit, but we accepted it in the church. Why? Because it looked spiritual, and they're doing it in the name of Christ. Many shall come saying that I am not the Christ anointed. Mm -hmm. Many shall come saying that I'm anointed. I'm here to speak for Jesus. 
Now you sit down and you no notepad, because if I'm entertaining enough, you're going to listen to me. And if I'm entertaining enough, you'll be back next week. And then the Lord told me to write this down. I have to write, read it because I thought, Lord, that is so true. He's like, Psst, I am about truth. What are you talking about? <laughs> he says, um, they present Jesus as the Christ. Do they present Jesus as the Christ or do they present themselves as the Christ? That's what you have to ask them. And know how you know? He says, he says, um, it is not about drawing people to you. It is about drawing people to Jesus. So if I'm trying to get members, oh, if I could just get more members and I, I could get more tides and I could, and I could, you know, I could elevate, I could drive a, a, a Mercedes like the other pastors and I get, so I'm trying to get more members for who? Me. So I'll preach whatever because I'm trying to get more members for who? Me. So the Lord says, um, if there, it should be about you drawing people to me, not drawing people to the church. Who cares who they, where they go to church? I want to know wherever you go that you're following Jesus. That you're in your own word. That you're reading your own word. That you know how to um, stay on a straight line when you're studying the word. That you don't get off into tangents and different things. Because if you don't know this for yourself, you would be like Rahman Abdul Rahim sitting in a Muslim uh, 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 mosque <laughs> trying to find God when you already got saved when you were 17. And I'm 19 in a Muslim mosque trying to find God. So what did I learn at the church that I, was, that I got born again at? Zero. It, was it the pastor's fault? No. It was not Amen. the pastor's fault. Amen. Was the pastor no good? Yeah, he was no good, but it ain't his fault. Because right. when I get to heaven, and, or if I get before God, he's not gonna, I'm not going to be able to say, oh, my pastor, now look, it's not me. You know what I mean? I, yeah, I was smoking and doing some things, but I was in church. My pastor never told me <laughs> that, you know, it was wrong, okay? And then how do you think that's going to fly with God? It's like, your pastor's not here before judgment. He ain't even dead yet. You're here. <laughs> you understand? Amen. So understand the responsibility that you have as a Christian in a relationship with God. <clears throat> he can have, this is how supernatural it, God is have an individual relationship with seven million people at once and you all feel personally involved yeah. Yeah. but he wants you to know this is one-on-one -on -one about me and you Jackie I don't I don't want to tell your business but the decision you made when you said I was doing this and I decided it wasn't good. For, that means the Holy Spirit was speaking. Yes. And you said, I agree with you, Holy Spirit. Let's be in line with God. And God and the angels in heaven are like this. You hear that? She did not quench the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit spoke, she listened and she hallelujah. Right. Yeah. Because you're making your decisions based on the fact that what you're in a relationship. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. OK, man. Let's go to um, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. <laughs> Somebody's mad at me. Like, <laughs> How could you say something bad? About, I heard you say something bad about TV Jakes. And I just wanted to email you and, let you, and, and ask you, why would you do that? I said, well, you know, just tell me the last time you seen him reading the Bible while he was preaching. Uh -oh. And she said, you're right. He don't read the Bible. No, he entertains you. Second Corinthians chapter 11. The best music and the best preaching, uh, uh, the best and the best preaching show get the most members. That's what the Lord told me to write down. Wow. The best music 
And the best preaching shows get the most people. Listen, Michael, big guy, never going to try to get you to believe in Pastor Sandy. Never going to try to get you to believe in church. You know what I want to get you, get you to believe in? Being at home and being a Christian when you're not here. Yeah. Reading your word when you're not here. Praying when you're not here. Yeah. Asking God, what's my next move when you're not here? Yeah. You understand? That's what I, that's my drive for people is that I don't want to be a part of your relationship, but I, cause I got a great relationship with Jesus. I just want you to have one too. That's all I want. Okay. So your Christianity is not in this building. Right. This, this is why when you get to heaven and God says, not many people, no, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of God. Right. But those who do the will of the Father, right? Right. Many will come in those days saying, haven't I done this in your name? And haven't I done that in your name? Wasn't I usher in your name? Didn't I lead songs in your name? <laughs> yeah, but when you went home, I was fo- you, understand, you don't understand. I followed you home because you said we were in a relationship. I followed you home. That was stuff you did in the church. So he says, away from me, I need lo, lo gnosko. I don't know you. Meaning is the same word that, that Mary says, I don't have an intimate relationship with a man. How can I be pregnant? Jesus is saying, I don't have an intimate relationship with you. I never had an intimate relationship with you. So I don't know you. And he says, away from me, you evildoer. Why? Because I don't know you. The relationship has to be personal. Amen. Yeah. Good word, Pastor. Are you in Second Corinthians? Because I probably said first. Second Corinthians chapter eleven, and we're in verse. Uh, let's see. Let's see. I'm going to start here at verse ten. It says. It says, as um, as anyway, it says, and we'll continue. Verse 11. Okay. I'm going to have to read this whole thing. Okay. I'll start at verse 9. And when I was with you and needed, some, and needed something, I was not burdened to anyone um, uh, for brothers who came from Macedonia supplied what I needed. I have kept myself being burdened to you in any way and will continue to do so as surely as the truth of Christ is in me. Nobody in this region of Archaea will stop this boasting of mine. Why? Because I do. But because why? Because I do not love you. God knows I do. And I will keep on what I am doing in order to cut the ground from under those who want to, who want an opportunity to be considered equal with us in the things we boast about. So this is what he's doing. All the prophets that are around preaching about Jesus and he knows they're false prophets, he was exposing them so that the people wouldn't go and listen to him. And so he says, I'm going to cut the ground from underneath all of them. I'm going to tell you, someone posted a thing the other day, um, uh, uh, the Salt Brothers, and they were like, uh, what's the guy? He's a Calvinist. And he was giving this plea, Paul Washer. And I was like, Paul Washer is a Calvinist, and Paul Washer is a member of SBC, Southern Baptist Convention, is not somebody that I would follow. Now, before I sent it, I didn't want to send it. You know why? Because they were excited about it. But God didn't tell me to agree with stuff when I see it, not to expose it. He tells you to expose it. You understand? Amen. So I say you can't follow somebody who thinks that God has already elected everybody who's going to get saved. So it's no use for you to, to witness or talk to Jesus or to anybody because God has already selected who he's going to, who's going to be saved. 
Therefore, the scripture that says whosoever doesn't really matter because God has already pre-selected who's going to be saved and who's going to hell. So therefore, that's Calvinism. Yeah. That is a part of the Southern Baptist Convention doctrine, though. And you don't understand. They agree with that. OK, so. It was it was very strange to me that the chaplain at one of the prisons that I was in was very upset at me because I was leading prisoners to Christ. I was saying prayers and having them, and he says, how dare you lead them to Christ and have them say his prayers. Um, it says if God hasn't elected them, they can't be saved. And I said, God elects them when they confess and ask Jesus Christ. So he went to the supervisor and had me kicked out of the out of the the, the, the the program at the prison. Why? Because his doctrine was Calvinism. His doctrine did not line up with the Bible. You understand? So we have to understand the scriptures. You are not pre-selected. You heard the gospel, you believed the gospel, and you accepted Jesus Christ. Now you're in. Yes. Okay? Yes. Because if God pre-selected you and didn't pre-select them and he select them that means god is choosing who goes to hell and who doesn't i like you you're, you're coming to heaven i don't like you that's not god but this is a doctrine that is pushed now listen to this it says for such men are false apostles deceitful workers masquerading as apostles of christ and no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. It is not surprising then if his servants masquerade as servants of righteousness. Their end will be what their actions deserve. You hear that? Yeah. I, don't want, I don't want the church to be your last word. I want your Bible and your personal time to be your last word. Yeah. OK. I need to go to. Um, Ecclesiastes chapter 12. All these scriptures are telling us that the Antichrist is coming. The Antichrist is coming. Four times in the New Testament, they're letting you know the Antichrist is coming. And the spirit of the Antichrist is already here, right? And we see the spirit of Antichrist all around us, right? We're at in bad stuff. Who's looking in the church? Huh? Who's, who's looking at what's going on in the church? Because if I can have yoga classes in church, at a church, something's wrong with my church. Right. So I'm saying, don't just always look at the outside attack because the outside attacks are obvious. Look at what's going on inside, the people who they've made famous for you to listen to, the music that they've made famous for you to listen to. Because Satan makes music too, you know that, right? Yes. So if you're listening to anybody, anyone's music, find out who you're listening to and what their, their, their walk in Christ is. One of the songs that was on today, I was like, I just saw that young lady in the interview. And they sat down and asked her, is Jesus the only way? And she said, I, I don't think he's the only way, but you know, I have my way. And I was like, but she's singing Christian songs. You know what I mean? And, and it's a great song because it's popular, right? But we have to know. See, I think when you get so popular that now you're on late night TV and you're on every channel and you're on magazines and you're a Christian singer, I want to know what you really believe now. So I, I looked into her background and I'm like, this girl ain't even a Christian. She's a singer who's doing Christian music, but she don't believe in the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Amen. You understand? Amen. So we have to be more alert and we have to be more diligent about our relationship with Jesus. Once it becomes personal, you're going to love Jesus. When it becomes personal, you're going to love Jesus. You know, you've got to put some stuff on the table so you and Jesus can exchange. Because he wants to 
He wants to tabernacle with you. You understand? So you have to put stuff on the table so you can begin to exchange um, day-to-day activity. I'm getting to Ecclesiastes. Uh, huh? Oh, there it is. Song, song. All right. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Okay. Um, go down to verse 9. Wow. Listen to what this says. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm starting from verse 8. It says, meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher. Now, if you, if you look at that in Hebrew, he's not talking about any teacher. He's talking about Jesus. He's talking about God. Okay? He's telling, the, the teacher is telling the world everything is meaningless without a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I want you to understand that. Not a, a Bible going relation, I mean a, a church going relationship with Jesus Christ, a personal relationship. So he says, meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher. Everything is meaningless. Not only was the teacher wise, who's the teacher? Jesus. But also he imparted knowledge to the people. He pondered and searched out and set in order many proverbs. Jesus did this for you. The teacher searched to find just the right words and what he wrote was upright and true. The words of the wise are like gold. They're, they're collected um, uh, sayings like, uh, like firmly embedded nails given by one shepherd. Be warned, my sons, children of God, of anything in addition to them. So now you're going to start adding, you're going to read Joel Osteen's latest book on how to, how to have your best life now. God says, don't add, your, don't add that stuff. I, I rewrote you a book. <laughs> they write these books and they give them millions of dollars even though they don't sell it because they're paying them. The books is just a front because nobody will be able to explain why they have all these millions and they just became a pastor and they just put out a book. Wow, that sold 20 million copies in, in the shortest time ever. They didn't sell a dime. The Freemasons who are over them tell you they sold 20 million books because they're giving them the money to operate to tell you lies mm. so that you continue in their doctrine. Mm. The doctrine of the Southern Baptist Convention is once you have salvation, you're already saved. You can never lose your salvation. I, I would have at least 500 more friends if I agreed with that. The Christian doctrine says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Yep. If you see a brother or a sister who is falling away, go and speak to them. You can save that soul from gonatos, which means what? Hell, right? right. Or thanatos, which means hell, right? So we're trying to make sure, encourage each other to stay strong in our walk, to have a active lifestyle in Christ. Active lifestyle in Christ. My wife has her own personal active lifestyle in Christ. Sometimes she's praying, I don't even get involved. I just walk down the stairs like, who's she going in? <laughs> and I just keep walking because that ain't my business. Right. <laughs> That's between her and Jesus. Yeah. Okay? Because when she leaves, I put my lead on and I say, okay, now I need to talk to you. You. And then I have my personal time with Jesus. You understand? Because we, even though we're married and we come together for prayer, it's still a personal relationship yes, with Christ. Okay? So I want you to know that. My son's just leaving, but I wanted to say something. He has this 
relationship with God. He's not like a religious guy. I walk in sometime, I, I'll catch him praying, and I start crying. My son's praying. <laughs> or I see him reading his word, or he asks me a question. So he has this firm relationship and belief about God. All of his actions are based on the fact that Jesus is real. Mm -hmm. Okay? But he doesn't carry a cross or anything like that. His most is, so what I'm trying to say is, it's more important your personal relationship than what you would display to other people, yeah, okay? Right. A guy walking around on with a big old cross around his chest and a, and a, and a it, you better find Jesus shirt on is, <laughs> it's not important, you have me not impressing me. I love it, okay, go Jesus, but that's not impressive for, for me and it's not impressive for God because God wants to know what do you do when you don't have the t-shirt on. Yeah. Okay. Ten minutes back. So listen what the, the teacher has done this, okay? It says, of making many books, there is no end. And much study wearies the body. So everybody writes books. Don't mean you have to read all that stuff. My best life now. How to how to to, to overcome your relationships, how to, how to have a wonderful marriage in Christ. I didn't find out how to be a good husband until I read the Bible. <laughs> All the books were out there. And believe me, I tried to get into it because I went through a bad one. I said, this time I'm going to be good. And somebody gave me a book about Christian, about marriage in the root of the Hebrew scriptures. And I went, oh, let me read this, right? And they start telling me about I have to be a servant to my wife. It says, if you want, you have to be a servant to your wife. Your wife is not supposed to serve you. You're supposed to be a servant to your wife. And it was telling me that I, that I should never uh, have a grudge against her. And that I would, and it was just giving me all of these things that, that I needed to know and that she needed to be protected in her prayer life because she's a wall built around you. And I was like reading all this stuff and it was basically telling me that if I wanted a wife, I needed to die. But I was reading this in the Bible. And then I wrote the scripture and it says, love Christ is Christ. Love your wife as Christ loves the church. Wait a minute. Christ died for us. That book was right. Those Hebrew scriptures were in there were right. They were telling me I had to die. If I wanted a bride, I had to die like Christ. That's not good wedding counseling for a guy. <laughs> <laughs> but now I started believing it. And now I started going home and saying, it's not about me, it's about you. Marriage was like coming together so beautiful. I was like, this is pretty good stuff I read. But I read about how Jesus became a great husband. Yeah. I was in my word finding out what the teacher taught about how to do this. You understand? Mm -hmm. Right now in the world, there are crazy things going on that we can't believe. Okay? I mean, me and a friend, we were out and we saw the police pulling kids uh, off the playground during the, the heavy corona days, right? The police were at the park because the kids were on the swings. And they had took down the yellow things, right? It's like, okay, out of all the things I've ever thought I'd see in my life, this is one thing I thought I'd never see. Like my wife leading a song, right? I was like, this was crazy. They were pulling the kids off the swing, like, come on down from there. I was like, the cops are at the playground. And they're telling the parents they're not allowed to be here. You're responsible. Next time we're going to give you a ticket. And I'm like, that's the times we're living in. We're living in a time when they're trying to, to, to depopulate the, the, the society. They're, they're doing everything that they're planning to do. Okay? The scripture says what? Jesus, the rock, will come and crush the enemy. Yeah. <clears throat> I was going to read. Um, how much time I got, Pastor? Okay. I was going to read 
the episode about the, this great king who was about to kill the Jewish people. And he sent them a warning, I'm coming, I'm going to destroy you, I'm going to kill all of you. And uh, you can pray to your God, but there's some other nations around you, they pray to their God and look what happened to them. So just letting you know, Israel, I'm coming, we're going to surround you, and we're going to kill every last one of you. And so the prophet goes and tells the king, hey, you know, they, they can do he goes and prays. The prophet pray. I mean, the king goes and prays, and God answers his prayer. He says, you go tell them that the guy will never enter even one step inside of your land. And that his demise will, will, will be quick and subtle, and he will never even take one step inside of Israel. And so the people... Listen, and they hear the army gathering around outside the camp to destroy the Jewish people, right? You guys know what story this is? Yeah, yeah. They're all out there. The Bible says how many of them was it, Pastor Ben? 180-something thousand, right? And they're ready to destroy Israel. Only thing the king had to go on was one thing. And what was that? What God said. They will never enter the camp and they're all going to die. This is what the Lord wants me to tell you and I'm going to go over this in Wednesday night's Bible study. They're never going to enter your camp. Don't worry. God is coming to save you. All you have to go on is God's word. He will never overcome the church. Jesus' word. Okay? So, it doesn't matter how many people send you the latest, greatest bad news of what's going to happen once you enter into the Red Sea. How many sharks are there? How are they going to bite your legs off? And then they're going to spit them out. And then they're just telling you. Know, you imagine being at the Red Sea and, and every five minutes people are telling you, what they going to do to you once you get inside the water. And God has said, I'm going to split the sea. You're going to walk by on dry land. And all you got to go on is what? The word of God. But every five minutes, some guy walks by. There are also electric eels in there. They're going to electrocute you to death. They're coming to get your kids. So at what time do we say, Jesus got us. We gonna sing songs in prison. We gonna praise God no matter what. You understand? When are we going to stop celebrating what Satan's planning? Because Satan has a lot of plans. He's dumb like that. I mean, I will ascend above the clouds. I will. I will sit in the seat of the Most High. I will. He's got a lot of plans. I'm going to make all humans uh, 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 half uh, machine and half transhumanism. It's coming. Oh, somebody sent me that one. I was like, what? They're going to make me half? It's like, this is horrible. <laughs> so you know what I have to do? I have to get back in the word of God and see what the book of Revelation That's says right. about the church. So ask John. John says, hey, you know what? I was kicking it in Patmos and I heard a, a trumpet and a door open in heaven and somebody said, come up here. And he says, That's all I can tell you. I don't know nothing about what happened after that. You understand? Yeah. You bless wonderful people of God. You know Jesus. Tribulation is coming. Antichrist is coming. A spirit of Antichrist is already here, outside and inside the church. You're set up for your demise. Except the word of God says that the enemy will never overcome the church. And that the church leaves before tribulation begins. So that's our confidence and that's our hope. Can you have confidence in that? Does God have a track record? Yes. 
Because if he has no track record, then we need to worry. Has he ever done anything miraculous before? Has he ever made a person disappear right off the earth before he died? Does he really know how to do that? So let's not participate in Satan's work. Let's, today I'm going to scare more Christians. I'm sending them this. <laughs> what are you sending me now? Oh, next week they're going to start making people take pills that are going to change your DNA and turn you into a zombie. Oh, y'all heard about the zombie one, right? So now we're going to be zombies. I'm like, I was like, Lord, if I don't stop reading this stuff, I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> God's like, get back to the Bible. I have a great plan too. Right. And, and I've never lied. Right. He's lying. Right. And he has grandioso stories. Mm-hmm. So I had a joyful week going through the book of Revelation. And I was like, wow, look at right there. Oh, look what they're going through. Oh, okay. ooh. I was like, <laughs> The sun scorching people? Demons on the earth walking around? Ooh. I'm like, and they want me to what? Go back into the world? Mm -hmm, Nah. Because that's coming. And we're right at the door of it. And do you think because you're right at the door of it, Satan is finished trying to deceive you? No. He'll send you somebody, someone, some religion, Ex-boyfriend calling you from out of nowhere. You know what I mean? All kind of crazy stuff, right? And you're like, and they just want to, don't worry, God won't mind. The trumpet blows, it doesn't distinguish rather you meant to do the right thing. You understand? It doesn't distinguish. It's not like, well, they don't have any oil, but they meant to go and get some before. No, it doesn't distinguish. It says, where are you now? Okay, are you in relationship now? Okay, so I just want us to know this we're all in a great position because we have personal relationships with Jesus Christ. I want to know what book you're reading. Don't tell me, yeah, Pastor, my, my pastor said, Don't pastor said nothing to me. I said nothing. What did you read? I want to know what you read. How was your study week? Okay, because if you had a study week, you're in personal relationship. How was your prayer week? Because this is a personal relationship. Tradition is a 666 word. Church can't be your tradition. Okay. This can't be a tradition. This has to be a personal relationship. God bless you. Amen.